must constantly look at things in a different way. The Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast was created by two physical therapists out of the desire to learn more about the different educational roles in physical therapy and healthcare and how healthcare education works by talking with educational leaders and people with different perspectives within physical therapy and across interdisciplinary lines on how education can be improved to disrupt the status quo of healthcare education. This is our journey and thanks for listening. Are you a third year physical therapy student that excels on tests when you have study guides, checklists, and deadlines? With all of the information available about how to prepare for the NPTE, it's easy to get disorganized and not feel prepared going into the big day. NPTE Prep Success is an online course that provides PT students easy to use study guides and step by step guidance through the NPTE preparation. To learn more, visit kylericeprep.com. Hey, everybody, this is Brandon. And thanks again for listening to the Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast. Now, this episode was recorded live at Smart Success PT Live 2018 at the Wyndham Grand in Clearwater Beach, Florida. And we had the opportunity to chat with Jerry Durham once again to chat about what he's learned about about regarding optimizing the patient experience since we last had him on the podcast. Now, for those who have not heard of Jerry, he is one of the leading authority figures in PT regarding the patient experience, and he is also one of the hosts of the Healthcare Disruption Podcast. Now, for this episode, we did have a little background noise that we were unable to completely edit out, so we do apologize for that. Um, But without further ado, here is our chat with Jerry. All right, Jerry, great to have you on the HET Podcast again. The last time we had you on, we just barely scraped the surface of what you deemed the patient experience. Can you kind of review for our listeners who may not have heard that episode yet? And if you haven't, I strongly suggest you go back and give that a listen. It's brilliant stuff. But could you maybe review for our audience kind of some of the steps of the patient life cycle? Yeah, so you said two things there, the patient experience and the patient life cycle. And they're both the same thing, just for clarity for your audience. I've just kind of thrown the life cycle in there as something new. So the patient experience, um, basic level and basic understanding it's every single touch point that your potential customer your customer has with your company so you could say client or patient so that basically that's what it is now what over the last year and go into it a little bit what that means is you know everybody says oh I you know my patient calls me and then they arrive and I'm like wait what do you do in between that first phone call and arrival They say, well, I send an email, I do a welcome call. I said, those are touch points. So they need to be mapped out and considered. So the patient experience is you writing down on a piece of paper, on a chalkboard, you guys probably don't even know what chalkboards are, (laughs) on a wall, on a whiteboard, every single touch point your customer has with your company. This is going to sound like such a bad pun, but that's so old school. Yeah, Yeah. dude, exactly. (laughs) Yeah, the chalkboard. I know, right? So, you know, Jerry, of course, kind of going back to that episode just briefly, because we were going kind of more on the realm of kind of getting to these touch points of the patient experience, patient life cycle, but then also talking about how to really teach staff on this. And what it really came down to was finding the right person that fit the culture that you could modify to help that serve your mission and really trying to choosing that person. Now, of course, you've kind of developed kind of a course that kind of goes into this kind of more in depth, the entire patient life cycle. And this really goes into a lot of detail on every step of the way. But, you know, what is amazing about your course is how much it involves the front desk. Because as we know, they are so important. Like that's the first point in general when they actually make contact with that clinic, particularly. I like to inquire. I mean, yes, they're going to find us other ways earlier than that. But just if they're actually like contacting to reach out, that's the first point that someone's going to have contact. So do you think you could kind of tell us a little bit of kind of the structure of that course and kind of how it will work for clinic owners looking to really maximize the patient experience and why they should consider this? Yeah, so the beauty of doing what I mentioned earlier is mapping out all those touch points is you can now take a step back and look at what are the objectives of those touch points what are the tactics that need to occur within that touch point how is this connected to the next touch point and then you can work out the flow sheet of what needs to occur at that touch point when I've done this over time and by time I mean years and years and years remembering this is about eight to nine years in the works is Um, What I've realized is the entry point, so what I call the front desk, I I call them the voice of the company. They're that first touch point. So we know people are gonna see your brand. So let's say this is the 
persona, the first experience with the personification of your brand. It's the voice, it's the face. So what I have found is from first phone call to customer arrival, till they finally step foot into your practice is the, is the touch points or multiple points are, they are the most leveraged of all the touch points in your patient's experience and where you can get the biggest bang for the buck because you're gonna be building trust before the patient, potential patient arrives. You're gonna be building that therapeutic alliance in a way of setting the provider up for the success. And there's also, if anybody's heard some of my recent podcasts, there's other alliances being built at the same time with other staff members, including the front desk. So the more we do of this before they arrive, the bigger that is, the bigger the trust level, the better the alliances are built the better their outcomes will improve. And I even put my neck out there and say, your patient's outcomes have already improved before they arrive. So that's the role that front desk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yep. So Jerry, you've got your PT practice, you're traveling the country, teaching the patient experience course. You've done some teaching with Ice Physio and Dr. Jeff Moore. What are some projects you have coming down the pipeline and some things you're really looking forward to working on? Yeah, thanks for bringing up Jeff Moore, because as I like to refer to Jeff Moore as my favorite clinician. Um, my favorite PT clinician. I love our course together, and if you guys have never looked into that, take a peek, because what we've done is we've brought that front desk portion that I love so much, and his skill at managing this person on a vowel day at arrival during their course of care is pure gold, and that is how you wanna manage your patients, and it fits perfectly into most any clinic's patient experience. Other than that, um, we've got the, uh, so I'm helping clinics map out their patient experience with practice owners and they're actually lead admin. I'm really excited about that. And don't tell anybody, but I'm most excited about the admin, not the practice <laughs> owners, as anybody who knows me now. I've got my, co- I don't want to go too deep in this, but I have a cost verification service that I believe fits into these first four steps that can help practices and front desk people discuss cost with their patients and actually at this point, potential patients far easier. And then um, I've started a front desk certification program with Todd Wickstrom. We actually just rolled out a 12 week certification program for the front desk people, not for the practice owners, for these front desk people. And we're actually going to uh, build a, what we call an alliance and a group and create this community for front desk people to learn from each other. So those are my three big things. Those are the things I'm focused on right now. And as everybody heard, it's really about from first phone call till customer arrival. No, I think that's great. And I think it's really good that you're getting that unique avenue, especially considering the front desk and doing all that to really help develop them to the process. Cause I think that's the first time I've really heard or seen anything done like that to that level. So I think that's gonna cause massive impact. And, You know, I know that you talk a lot about uh, Matt Watkinson's 10 Principles for Great Customer (laughs) Service as a book that you've been loving since the inception of your podcast, the Healthcare Disruption Podcast. Are there any other good books that you've read recently that you'd like to pass on to our audience that perhaps you found the most valuable from a business standpoint or customer service standpoint? Yeah, let's, um, if if some of these listeners have heard me before, you're going to hear some repeats because you're going to have to. You know, um, we're at SSPT live here and Greg Todd mentioned sell this morning and it freaks a lot of people out so I still have to default to Daniel Pink's to sell as human Mm -hmm. he actually this is not why you buy it people yet he actually references physical therapy having to sell a home exercise program in there and it's brilliant and it was Daniel Pink that really helped me to understand that selling is education and education and the word sell are interchangeable in in healthcare and should be and if we approach it that way it makes it easier and if you're sharing content that's educating and even from the first customer phone call that I referenced until customer arrival everything you're doing in between is education whether it's where your clinic is whatever you're doing it's helping to education and and it's selling value at the same time. So To Sell is Human by Daniel Pink. You know, any of the Disney books I always refer to, of which I can never keep their title straight. So I'll tell you what, there's two Disney books. I'm gonna make sure you guys get in the show notes. I apologize profusely. And Matt Watkinson's book, and thanks for referencing. He was episode three and four of the Healthcare Disruption podcast. And uh, pure gold. And I actually live close to him now, and um, I'm hopefully going to meet him soon. That's awesome. So, That's yeah. great. That's awesome. 
So Jerry, you know, we asked this last question to each of our guests, um, but if you could change one aspect of healthcare education, what would you change and how would you change it? And realize the first time in the show you said, you know, you would make every new admin of any PT school read the subjective portion of any Jeffrey oh, yeah. Maitland book yeah. at the beginning and then at the end of PT school. Would you like to add another aspect or another step to improve the healthcare education system? You know, so you, the three of us were just talking before we came on about understanding your audience, right? And so here we are at SSPT Live and I just shared with you guys that fortunately I get to present on the third day because that means I get to sit in the room and listen to questions. And so I think I'm at an advantage because I get to fine tune my content to educate people about the patient experience. So if I, so what I just said and shared, I wish there was a way we could bring some of that within the PT training where helping you know, helping PTs to understand better who their audience is going to be early on. And, you know, it's important that, yes, it's about insurance. Yes, it's about being part of a team. But it's always going to be about the patient first. And if, mm-hmm. if we could do that a little better, because when I sit around late at night and I'm sitting at my desk and I'm trying to make a business decision, I always go, what's going to be best for the patient. And I'm going to tell you right now, people, as a businessman, as someone who loves to sell, as someone who loves what I do as physical therapy, uh, focusing on your patient will, I'm going to say this, will make you more money than anything else you can do in healthcare. If you focus on that person and do what's best for them, it actually is advantageous to your business. So back to PT education, if we could just make sure that always the focus was on that patient. There you go. There's my take. Jerry, I appreciate your time, man. It's always great to chat with you and especially great to chat with you live and in person. Man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good, it mm-hmm. it's good to see you both. It's good to so see you both. Thanks so much. We appreciate you coming on. And just so you guys know, F. Scott and I actually hit our hit the Devil Rays Park last night and F. Scott hit his 13th Major League Baseball Stadium, and I got in my 16th, so that was pretty epic I'm on last his heels. night. I'm at his heels. Almost there. Almost there. That was epic. Cool. Thank you, guys. Access to healthcare is one of the largest issues facing both providers and patients, as millions of people worldwide lack timely and affordable access to healthcare. Anywhere Healthcare, a telehealth platform, is a simple, low cost option for providers and patients that eliminates the barriers to access to all kinds of healthcare. To find out more, check out anywhere.healthcare, which is available on our show notes. And if you use the code HET in all caps when you email to sign up, you'll save 25% off the total cost. Thank you for attending class today, and we hope that you learned something and gained value from the content. If you'd like to schedule office hours with us, feel free to add us on Twitter at HET Podcast, on Instagram, HET Podcast, on Facebook, the Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast, and the homepage, healthcareeducationtransformationpodcast.com. And for those of you following along in the syllabus, extra credit can be obtained by liking us, sharing us, and leaving a review. Let's continue our journey up Mount Educational Success as lifelong learners.